Over 2,000 years ago, the Chinese civilization was driven to a turning point unprecedented in history by the Qin army. However, according to historian Sima Qian, this army destroyed every city it passed through, slaughtering the inhabitants. Could it be true that this terrible army unified the whole of China, relying solely on cruelty and brutality? In 1974, large quantities of weapons were discovered in the Terracotta Warriors' Pit. After studying these weapons, something very unusual came to sight. Something not written by Sima Qian. At Xiping County in Henan Province, archaeologists found numerous iron smelting remains. Over 2,000 years ago, there was an iron smelting center in the state of Han here. Ironware then was already being produced on a certain scale. The sharp point of the iron sword from the state of Yen, unearthed at Yi County in Hebei province, is as hard as present-day high-carbon steel. During those hundreds of years of the Warring States period, bronze was gradually stepping off the stage of history and iron was opening up a new era. And it was hard to understand that the Qins of the same time had not caught up with this new era. The 40,000 pieces of weapon unearthed in the pit of the terracotta warriors were all made of bronze. Could it be said that the Qin army unifying China was poorly equipped? A case of attempted murder known to all was recorded by Sima Qin in the historical records. One year before the Qin Empire unified China, when the strong Qin army was ready to wipe out the Yen state, Jing Ke, an envoy of Yen, came to the Qin Empire with a map of Yen state. This was a carefully planned plot. Jing Ke's real purpose was to assassinate the first emperor of Qin under the cover of presenting the map. It was stated in the historical records that Jing Ke, the assassin, was holding a dagger and the first emperor of Qin ran around the pillars trying to draw his sword to fight back. He tried three times but failed. Sima Qian explained that the sword of the first emperor of Qin was too long to be drawn out in time. Bronze swords were generally daggers. The reason why it couldn't be made long enough was because bronze was brittle and easily broken off. In the period of the Warring States, the length of the well-known Gojian sword of the Yue King was only 55.6 centimeters. Bronze swords were generally broad and short, not much more than 60 centimeters long. A sword of this length could be easily drawn. How was it possible the first emperor of Qin failed to draw out his sword because it was too long? The historians have long puzzled over Sima Qian's explanation. In 1974, archaeologists discovered an entirely different bronze sword in the pit of terracotta warriors. What surprised the specialists was this sword was over 91 centimeters long. How could Qin craftsmen make such a long sword? It could be inferred that the first emperor's bronze sword was most likely lengthened. It was extremely difficult to draw a one meter long sword while trying to escape from his assassin. According to Sima Qian's records, the first emperor of Qin finally managed to draw out his sword on hearing his imperial physician shout, Put your sword on your back and draw it out. Specialists were puzzled. What on earth was the purpose of lengthening the sword? 
Richard Burden, a British scholar of ancient weapons in the 19th century, believed that in a fight with daggers, stabbing was superior to slashing as it was closer to the opponent. The ancient Roman army came to a similar conclusion in bloody battles. With the same strength, stabbing was more lethal than slashing. Stabbing caused death, but slashing caused wounds. The Qin sword was 30 centimeters longer than that of their enemies. Obviously, they could more easily stab them. That was the most likely reason why the Qin swords were lengthened. However, they were made of bronze after all. How did they manage to make long swords which did not break? In the Bronze Age, the key problem of sword casting was how much tin had to be put into the copper during the smelting process. A sword would be soft with less tin in it and it would be hard with more tin but more brittle. A chemical quantitative analysis on chin swords reveals that the proportion of copper to tin for a bronze sword is perfect for a combination of hardness and toughness. What is even more attractive is its shape. Professor Yuan Zhongyi has carefully studied this peculiar shape. The design enhanced the key part of the Qin sword with a certain elasticity. At the same time, the sword itself wasn't too heavy. Perhaps the lengthening of Qin swords suggested the Qin army had made a breakthrough in the theory of fighting skills. The casting technique of the Qin sword had reached a peak. Its length, hardness and toughness were a near perfect combination. As a result, its attacking performance was greatly enhanced. According to Sima Qian's records, the first Qin emperor, with only a single stroke, struck the assassin Jing Ke to the ground. With him perished the state of Yen. Over 2,000 years ago, after annihilating the six states in the central plain, the Huns, a nomadic people from the north, became the main enemy of the Qin Empire. When the Qin army was at war to unify the country, the Hun cavalry took the opportunity to come southward and occupied large areas of land to the south of the Yellow River. How to cope with this brave, agile Hun cavalry became a main preoccupation for the first emperor of Qin. It was very difficult for the traditional infantrymen to resist when the Hun cavalry charged at high speed. Judging by the historical records, a long-range weapon called the crossbow most likely played a leading role in defeating the Huns. In the pit of the terracotta warriors, the wooden parts of the crossbows had already rotted away over time, but the remains make it possible for the Qin crossbows to be reconstructed. The restored Qin crossbow is of amazing power. A Qin crossbow was different from an ordinary bow, it had to be drawn with a stirrup. An arrow could only be fitted on the bowstring with all the bowman's strength. The specialists estimate that the range of the Qin crossbow was as far as 300 meters. The effective lethal radius was 150 meters. Its lethal force was far stronger than that of any other kind of bow. The archaeologists found some small bronze devices in the traces left by the rotted crossbows. These mini bronze parts were the triggers of the crossbows. They were ingeniously designed. But it's hard to understand why they could not have been made simpler. The production cost could have been greatly reduced using a simpler mechanism. A bowman had to make great efforts to release the hook from the tightened bowstring. This required a lot of strength. It was certain the crossbow would shake at the moment of shooting. 
Even in today's shooting training, accuracy can be influenced if the breath is not well adjusted at the moment of firing. The crossbow of the Qin army was operated by a set of ingenious devices. The hook was suddenly lowered at the moment of shooting. As a result, it was much easier to pull the trigger. That was just one of the advantages of the crossbow. One had to make great efforts to draw a bow. Gradually, the warrior would become exhausted. The Wang Shan, an aiming device on a crossbow, could make the trigger automatically readjust to its shooting position. But it had another incredible function. It can be imagined how these Qin bowmen shot at the Hun cavalry on the battlefield. While aiming at a target in the distance, a bowman could calculate the angle of the crossbow by means of the aiming device. The arrow could hit the enemy along a parabolic path. Most probably, the Wang Shan was the most primitive aiming device ever devised for a weapon. Most of the bronze weapons unearthed in the pit of terracotta warriors were arrowheads. The archaeologists hold these bronze arrowheads were from crossbows, as no bows were found in the pit. In the period of the Warring States, there were many kinds of arrowhead. Death comes to mind when one looks at the barb and bloody trough on an arrowhead. But the arrowheads discovered in the pit were all three-edged. Why did the Qin army prefer this kind of arrowhead? A three-edged arrowhead has three sharp edges and corners. Its sharp point becomes the cutting force at the moment of hitting the target. The arrowhead can penetrate the armor right into a human body. There was a fierce barb on an arrowhead with wings, but its airfoils were easily influenced by the wind, and its arrowhead could miss the target as a result. The airfoils were abolished on the three-edged arrowheads used by the Qin army. This made shooting more precise. The specialists made a careful analysis of these arrowheads. They found it hard to believe the test data when it was laid on the table. The examination showed that the three curved surfaces were nearly the same. It's an almost perfectly streamlined arrowhead. The outline of the arrowhead is quite similar to the external form of a bullet, which can reduce air resistance during flight. We have every reason to believe the Chins had the same purpose in designing three-edged arrowheads. The results the Chins achieved were quite close to the rules of modern aerodynamics. This ancient arrowhead was a representative example of early projectiles comparable to today's bullets. It was quite likely that